Hi, I'm Diane McGarry with Drake at Arts. With me today are co-host Tom McGarry, quilter Trisha Deck, and ASL interpreter Shelley. Trisha's journey took her from sewing to a degree in fine arts photography to her own commercial graphic screen printing company, and for the past 21 years, to art quilts. Art quilting has become her passion and profession. She combines all the creative art skills she built over the years, using photography for inspiration, color selection, composition, and images. Trisha blends in her graphic skills from screen printing and knowledge of fabrics and sewing to help create her art quilts. Each quilt she makes is an expression of art, her artistic voice. They have been shown in exhibitions by the Artists Association of Nantucket and Nantucket Looms. She belongs to the Quilters Connection Quilt Guild, Rising Star Quilt Guild, and Studio Art Quilt Association. Wow, Tricia. Mm. So someone must have taught you sewing at an early age. How did you start? Well, uh, my mother always uh, was involved in creating. Uh, could be uh, needlepoint, cruel. So she taught me all those things. And I have a very distinct remem uh, memory. And so I guess I had basic sewing skills. And w when I was 12, I decided to make a dress. And <clears throat> so I took some of my mother's fabric, I laid down on the floor, and I traced my outline. <laughs> <laughs> and then I sewed it. And it wasn't too bad. But <laughs> At that point, my mother decided, okay, we're going to get you more advanced sewing uh, classes. So I'd learned to make a lot of clothing at that point. Wow. I can't, how creative. I've only <laughs> laid down and, and um, sent hugs, cut out hugs to send to people. <laughs> right. Not clothes. I was thinking, oh my gosh, how did it, it get together? You know, because you, first well, of all, it's hard to, to trace yourself when you lay down. And second of all, you don't always think of, the depth of the of thickness of our bodies, right? When you lay down. Right, right. Well, that's why it was so so. And of course it didn't have sleeves. It was just, you know, a hole for the neck and, you know, just sold up the sides, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That is cool. So yeah. from there you went and learned how to sew more things and read patterns and things? I did, I did a lot of sewing. Actually in high school, I really sewed pretty much all my own clothing and oh, wow. uh, sewed my wedding dress and uh, oh. all of that. And, you know, then when I, I had children, I made a lot of Halloween customs. I mean, uh. <laughs> to the point where my sister would call up years later and say, okay, do you have a lion or yeah. a, this? And she would come borrow clothes, you know, mm. borrow the customs. Wow, very That's cool. cool. That is so cool. So. From there, you eventually went to quilting. Tell me, did you ever do hand quilting? Because there seemed to be, my daughter did quilting just a little bit. There, and there seemed to be this dynamic between machine quilters and hand stitch quilters. Yes, so I did in the very beginning, I remember cutting out a pattern, but it didn't, I never even finished it. Um, Cause then it was patterns using little pieces of cardboard. And um, I just, you know, started doing, I think I took, um, there's a quilt in the day class over at Lincoln Sudbury High School. Uh -huh. And of course I picked a queen size and quilt in the day, you don't pick a queen size. And mm -hmm. so I eventually finished that, but it's all been machine um, quilting. Um, so, uh, and occasionally I will add features of hand quilting onto individual pieces if, uh -huh. Um, that's why I think they need. Huh. So has there been an evolution in quilting then from just using them for um, clothing and for warmth to making them art pieces? Yes. So, I mean, I guess as I started doing traditional quilting, I started seeing classes um, for landscape quilts. Um, and so I started taking a bunch of classes. And what really got me going, so I sort of, I had the screen printing business for many years and my husband was traveling. I had four children and my business was just not, I was not enjoying it. So I closed my business. About the same time I saw the quilt shop that I um, went to in Cambridge 
I saw an ad for a quilt camp and it was mother's hours and you came on a Friday and they provide breakfast and lunch. It was fabulous. Um, and you worked with a designer uh, the first day on Friday. And then you bought, uh, we did the first one did drawings of flowers and leaves and then we sort of picked out fabrics. And then we came home that weekend, washed the fabric and uh, came back on Monday and proceeded to work with the designer for the rest of the week. Um, and it that's really what hooked me, I think. Um, it's just that sort of, see, and I do have this distinct rem uh, memory of going into a quilt shop years ago uh, before any of this. And on the table was this scene of, I think it was a woodland scene with a bear. And I was just mesmerized. It was just like, you can do this, you know? Um, so eventually all those pieces fell into, and I started taking more and more landscape classes and um, then started using my photography more. Wow. So let's look at some of those beautiful quilts that you have. Sure. So let me get that going. Uh, yeah, make sure that Shelly's pinned so we don't lose her. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. One second, please. There are actually some behind you too while Tom's getting those yes. together. Uh, it's very lovely. I love, I want to go over your shoulder and walk into the the beach and the marsh there. That's so beautiful. Oh, yes. Can you see that? I, I don't see. Yes. Yeah, I see it. OK, so we can see the quilt. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little about this one, if you don't mind. And I don't see yes. Shelly at the moment. Do you see Shelly? I do. I yeah. see her, too. I see Shelly and Tricia. OK, good. So this was a commission piece. It was a couple I met in the spring on Nantucket um, who just was living next door and wanted to see some of my work and they came over and, and they just loved it. They're actually living in Portugal and they wanted to take a piece back with them. Oh, wow. So they looked at all my pieces and they picked these three, which is the uh, Congregational Church on Nantucket. Um, and then the heron in the middle that uh, was in one of the creeks um, I had photographed. I called that looking for lunch. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the Sanctity Lighthouse. Uh, Nantucket is known for its daffodils uh, and a daffodil festival. Um, they've On the island, they have planted daffodils everywhere. Um, really? I had no idea. Oh, it's quite amazing. It's the last weekend, April, and um, there's a antique car parade on Main Street. They shut it down and they're, it's decked out with lots and lots of daffodils. And then they drive around town twice and then out to Sconset, the other end of the island, and all along the roads are daffodils. It was oh started by a woman, I think, 30 years ago, who thought this was a wonderful idea. And, um, so that's sort of what the daffodils, they're a lot planted out by Sanctity. So I, these were actually all framed pieces. Um, so they wanted me to unframe them and create a unified piece. Um, so I took them out and I found a background. But then they just look like they're floating. So I knew I needed to expand the uh, parts hmm. in each quilt out into the background. Hmm. Oh, so you added the trees and the grass and the daffodils afterwards. Exactly, yeah. Oh, neat. Yeah, yeah. So it was really a fun project. And um, and then I actually had the perfect piece of driftwood that I've been holding on to for probably seven or eight years that worked. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's so, really lovely. So I really, I love herons. I just yeah, love it's herons. a beautiful heron, especially the reflection. Yeah. Now he was just sitting there. He didn't seem to mind me taking his photograph and grabbing a little silver fish from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's try the next.
quilt, if that's okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh, nice. So again, this is on Nantucket. It's a restaurant out in Sconset called the Chanticleer. Um, and it's always just so beautiful. They have, you actually walk through that fence uh, into their yard. Um, the horse is actually not quite as large, um, but I sort of wanted to highlight it. So I, I made that larger. Um, and on the roof, they always have you know, I think it's um, an ivy growing up there. So I did what's called thread painting. Um, if it's hard to tell, you can see the texture. Um, so I stitched thread onto a clear piece of plastic. Um, and then the plastic washes away. And it's, oh, wow. I don't have an example here. Um, it's just this piece of loose thread and then I sort of cut it and lay it out to make it go around the windows and stitch it down there. Um, I'm sorry. So you don't um, stitch the thread between the plastic and the um, and the quilt. You actually stitch it separately. It is actually. I'll show you a piece of the plastic. It's actually stitched on the plastic. Sorry, hold on a second. While I stop. It holds it together. Oh, I see. So if you could show that again, I'm not sure everybody could see she that. Yeah. So here's the plastic. Yeah. Okay. And um, it's water soluble. Yes. So I just stitched like crazy, lots and lots of thread, different colors, zigzagging it so that they attach. Yeah. And this gives it a, a place for it to attach. Um, and but that's not off. on top of the other material. No, this is completely separate. I wish I had a little piece to show you. Um, but so then it's just this mass of threads. Okay. And then I take it to the sink, wash the plastic away, and it's like lace ah. in a way, but not as pretty as lace. So if but you really think of the sewing machine, um, the way it's, it's stitching, really, it's making knots. It's making a lot of knots with the thread. And then exactly. we don't really think of it that way, but that's really what's happening. Yeah. And, and the plastic enables it for it to hold together uh -huh. to have a base. But right. then we, you know, it washes away. And then I will lay it around the windows and also, you know, stitch it down so it, it sticks. Uh, so it stays there. But it gives you also a surface texture. Mm. Um, that is so cool. So, yeah, it's fun to work with. Um, <laughs> And uh, huh. the only other thing on that piece, the little sign on the left, which said this is Chanticleer, I photograph um, the signs. Yes. Uh. And then I print that out onto fabric through my printer. Uh, oh, the nice. fabric is attached to paper hmm. and it prints with the ink giant printer. Huh. And that way I can, I add that little detail for, um, my a lot of my pieces that's really nice i almost missed it to be honest with you yeah me too i was yeah. focusing on all the other things you were describing you know it's actually hanging up um on the building up higher mm. um but you know i thought that was sort of a nice people particularly who know it would recognize the sign yeah and i like that the merry-go-round horse is so big because he really fits it and it doesn't feel like he's a merry-go-round horse you know i want to walk through the gate and get on him and, and gallop away right. <laughs> i know it's it's like this one you know a lot of times we bike by here um i've actually never been to the restaurant but um as you bike by there's all these hedges and it's uh -huh. like this little secret garden as you Aww. look through the fence and you can see the horse that's very neat Hmm. Let's see if we can get the other uh, quilt. There we are. So this is called Ellen Sheep. Um, I've lived in Lincoln, oh, I don't know, almost 40 years. Oh. Um, and it's my neighbor's sheep. And she's had a sheep farm, you know, before that, um, still here. And she, you know, raised her children there and started farming sheep 
and uh, I went one day. I was visiting her, and sitting in her bed in her kitchen, looking out over the field. And it, I guess it must have been dinner, you know, feeding time for the sheep. All of a sudden, they came. All of them came from the field, back field, across this rickety little bridge <laughs> into the yard. Wow. And I just it was <laughs> such a wonderful, just beautiful. So I eventually went called her back up and said, can I come, you know, photograph this? And uh, so I did, um, went back and photographed several different times. And um, and then, and the wool on the sheep um, is actually felted uh, to the piece and it's actually wool from her sheep. Wow. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I did that and uh, but it was it actually won best in show at the brush gallery a couple summers ago. That is so neat. I was wondering if you used the same stitch technique, but you didn't. You used felted fleece for this. Yes. Yeah. Wow. But looking at the image, even though the image is two dimensional, it really looks uh, three dimensional. I can almost feel the texture. Yeah, and this is actually in my house. I hang it above our fireplace. <laughs> but the wool it does stick out, but it's uh, the technique is called felting, mm -hmm. which I actually have. It looks like a sewing machine, but it has 10 very sharp needles. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, um, it, the needles go up and down and sort of, because the wool's not sewn in there, it's technically packed in there by all these needles. Huh. Wow. What is it called again? It's felting. Oh, um, it is a type of felting. It is, which okay. some people just use a single needle, um, but this is a machine that does 12 needles at once. <laughs> oh, I didn't, so I'm gonna have to ask you to explain that because to me, felting is taking fleece and washing it and um, rubbing it and agitating it so that it um, binds and gets smaller. Yes, right. that is true. But there are, um, I have, let's see if I can, uh, well, I don't know. Um, okay. It's, there's, have you ever seen the little animals made of felt? Yes. Like gnomes? Yeah. Those are actually done with needles. Yes. Um, so that you're con you're pushing the felt into whatever the sub substrate is. Substrate. Um, you mean you're pushing the, you're pushing the the fleece in? Right. Exactly. Um, or the yarn or whatever. But you're right about that's another kind of felting um, oh. with the water and so forth. And the agitation because it it makes it thicker. I've um, right. actually, when my children were little and I was teaching them how to knit, we read a book called Sunny's Mittens. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with it. No, no. <laughs> well, Sunny's grandmother teaches her how to um, knit in the round. And um, when they're done, they felt, they wash, they put the gloves on and they wash their hands with the gloves on and agitate them. And then they they um, get smaller, of course, and they fit their hands. Wow, that's wonderful. Oh so yeah. Apparently each individual little uh, thread of wool is very rough. It's got little you know stuff sticking out and well, it's rubbing here. together, they kind of, you know, catch and tangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's this is wonderful. Yeah. So this is a different felting technique where you um, use a needle, a thin needle, I'm assuming. Yes, I can show you a single one. Um, it's extremely sharp. Um, and it goes on to, well, this has three. I don't know if it's, you can see. Oh my God. Yeah, I can see multiple needles. Yes. Yeah. And you sort of punch it down like this onto like a piece of foam. 
Uh -huh. um, and then it slowly build up on it um, till you get Perfect. whatever shape you're looking for. So unlike when you're doing the technique with this, um, where you were sewing the vines, right. where the plastic melts away, this, you keep whatever you're pushing the fleece into. Yes. Whatever, so for my, whatever needs to be in the right shape, right? If it's yeah. a ball or a gnome or a, a rock or, or in this case, um, you need to put something behind the fabric for the, for the um, sheep's clothing to stay on. <laughs> right. Well, essentially, it went into the into the quilt. Ah. Okay. Um, so that you know, because that was stiff in several layers. Um, and uh, so I'm wondering if I might be able to show you that. In a second. This is fascinating. Yeah. I didn't know there were so many different things to go into um, building a picture yeah. with a quilt. It's so this really is neat. another sheep quilt, uh, which I did, oh. which is a scene from further down the road, actually. Uh, it was a slightly different farmer. And you can see the um, sheep are actually, the oh, wool wow. is actually thicker. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you can see from the side. Yeah. Yes. But on the back, because the needles, you can see it's actually starting to come through. Oh, wow. And that's what the need, you know, those needles did. Uh-huh. So. That's so neat. Oh, dear. Is that me? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, it happens. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is another one of my sheep. Very nice. Oh, and I love the hay behind them. Mm. Yeah, I happened to drive by and, you know, they just rolled out the uh, bale uh, of hay and uh, the sheep just thoroughly enjoying it. Uh. <laughs> I bet when you're hungry, you're hungry. <laughs> yes, that is true. How neat. So there are very many different techniques to making an art quilt. Yes. Yeah. 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 Just sort of try to figure out what will make it, you know, what technique to use to make it look like, you know, what you're what you want for the end product. And how do you decide what you want your subject to be? Uh, it's pretty much my photographs, like driving by and seeing the sheep and taking that picture and um, I keep a file on my computer of quilts I want to do and eventually pull things out. You know, it might be a call for entry for a show or um, or just something I want, you know, like the sheep I've just always wanted to do for many years and finally have the opportunity. I love sheep. They're <laughs> such sweet animals. They are. They are. So speaking of photographs, uh, the, the quilts on the wall behind you, uh, mm -hmm. they almost look like paintings, except the one in the middle might be a photograph. So could you comment a little bit about those, please? Certainly. The, um, the one on, is that your left or right? It, I'm seeing it as my right, but who knows? The one you're right. pointing at. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're right. So um, that was actually a photograph of a vine and flower huh. taken in Italy. Mm -hmm. And I sort of... Um, broke it down into squares and did a more abstract type of um, quilt for that one. Um, the middle one is uh, Lake Willoughby in, up in the Northeast Kingdom in Vermont. Oh. Uh, my husband's family have a house up there. Um, had it for uh, 60 years and it's right on the lake. Oh, wow. And we mainly, went up when his parents were there, um, July, August type of thing. And we go up occasionally winter to ski. There's a um, Burke Mountains not far from there. And the last, I don't know, probably 10 years, we've been going up more seasons. And my husband happened to be there in May when the ice was breaking up. And uh, I actually have not seen this, but he actually went out in the kayak. Mm -hmm. And as he's going in the kayak, ice is just crackling. Huh. Oh my um, gosh. 
Wow. How incredible. Yeah, it really, and we haven't ever seen it since. Oh, you know, yeah. you just have to be there that day. Mm. Yeah. Um, and he photographed it. And mm. so I um, created that from his photograph. And pretty much the path is what his kayak was so Oh, right wow. Yeah. So that's not a path through the the sand, as I originally thought it. That's a path through the ice flows? Right. That's the water. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. So all those little pieces are supposed to represent the ice. Huh. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> and it. I also, in trying to create this, um, a woman actually who was sort of a mentor to me, the sky needs to be the same in the water because it's sure. a reflection. Um, yeah. So that was um, so that was a fun piece to do. I called it melting moments. Huh. Wow! I mean, I could t I've been where there've been ice flows, and it, you can't really tell when the ice stops and the water starts. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. I can see that in your quilt too. That you can't the transition is fluid, really. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't realize, I thought it was walking from the beach out to that, but oh my gosh, that's his kayak. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Trisha, that's incredible. So that was you know, fun to do. And then the last one is um, Grant Point in Nantucket. Um, and for the big holidays for daffodil, there's a daffodil wreath. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Fourth of July, there's an American flag. And uh, for the Christmas stroll, the Christmas season, they do it. A, uh, so I just finished that yesterday, actually. Huh. Nice. Uh, yeah, very nice. So that, the wreath is actually yarn. Um, and then they have oars behind sometimes. Mm. I yeah. also would for the oars. Um, mm. And uh, <laughs> wow. Very, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> These are really neat. Oh, thank oh you. my gosh. Thank you for sharing your work with us today, Trisha. It's really, really fascinating. I didn't realize how much went into the creativity of, of making a quilt. I, I mean, I know you have to figure out the fabrics and the colors and everything, but I didn't know it went beyond just sewing into felting and all these other techniques that you've brought, brought forward. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. this information. Oh, you're welcome. I love talking about it. So oh, good. <laughs> We look forward to your art gallery for the Drake It Arts March event on Saturday, March 12th. Please get your free tickets through Eventbrite. The art gallery will also be available on the Drake It Arts YouTube channel after the showing. For more information, go to drakeitarts.com or email us at drakeitarts at gmail.com.